Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today, we've got a weird one. We're talking about a weird album from a weird band. It's really weird. It's Vita Blue from Mama Leek, and did I mention they're weird? I'm not sure I did. Just to be safe, just a heads up, I'm gonna let you know right now, real quick. It's kind of weird. This is apparently the ninth full-length studio album from this mostly anonymous experimental extreme metal crew, bringing black metal and noise rock and experimental and avant-garde jazz together in an abstract, chaotic, dark, gritty union of sorts. I say apparently their ninth album because I was not aware that they had that many albums. I was not aware that they had been around for like 15 years. I was made aware of them through uh, 2022's Diner Coffee and also through other people here on YouTube and across the metalverse and, you know, in the comment sections of other videos and on Discord and such. This was not a band I was intimately familiar with beforehand and am still not, I should add. And I say mostly anonymous because the identity of at least one member was revealed last year, Eric Livingston, but unfortunately it was when he he passed away, tragically. And it's important to remember that specifically because that specifically, as well as also the death and legacy of MLB athlete Vita Blue, uh, were major inspirations for many of the sounds and themes displayed and presented and communicated on this album. As an official statement from Mama Leek reads, Time is a slippery fish, maybe only someone like Vita could grasp it. The musical recording is a reflection on loss and its acceptance. We explore various examples for each song, including the loss of pride, of money, of glory, of country, of sanity, of a favorite sports team, of significant others, and everyday oneself. It also explores various associated moods, fear, panic, reverence, stoicism, and steadfastness to arrive at a resolution. Loss is only a test, the glue that holds and erodes each memory, the connection that binds and loosens us all pitch by pitch, inning by inning. This is your celebration. Vita Blue is a person, moment, and memory, together the crystallization of apocalypse unveiling disclosure. Going into the actual album, I can very honestly say I don't feel like I've heard metal and jazz and like noise and like all these extreme experimental sounds and genres fused together in this exact way. That's not to say that metal, extreme, noise, rock, jazz fusions are abnormal per se. They're more common than the average person might think. I mean, some of the biggest and most iconic and influential names in progressive metal, like Opeth, Cynic, and Atheist, have been more than happy on several an occasion to show off their love and appreciation for jazz and jazz fusion music. Plus, also bands like Blotted Science, Planet X, Animals as Leaders, Imperial Triumphant. But there is a certain elegance and grandeur that I expect of these bands that I am absolutely not getting from Vita Blue. It's raw, it's gritty, it's heavy, and ripe with emotion and anxiety. And everything is extremely well balanced and feels really organic and natural. Yes, it's artsy, but it's not artsy fartsy. Yes, there's a lot of work that's been put into it, but I wouldn't say that it's pretentious. You've got Tegusi Galpa, which at times feels really quiet and intimate and warm, kind of like I'm listening to actual jazz in an actual jazz club. I'm hearing woodwinds, I'm hearing slow rolling jazz drums, but I'm also getting these very erratic and extreme outbursts with like screaming, shouting vocals and like these metallic guitars. There's noise and dissonance and everything feels disoriented, but in a really organized kind of way. I'm especially intrigued and excited by these more like country western-ish kind of like guitar licks and tones near the end playing out in a more droned kind of melancholic fashion with these jazzy drums and these like moaning, groaning, howling vocals. It's just so weird. If the most confusing nightmare in the world were to have a sound, I'm sure it would be this. Then there's the title track, Vita Blue, which throws these deep, bellowing, monstrous vocals at the forefront of the sound and plays around with static and feedback and moaning, aching strings and horns and these very noisy, patchy kind of metallic guitar licks and tones and chords. It sounds very anxious and confused. There's a lot of atmosphere here. There's a lot of emotion here. 
Then there's Ancient Souls No Longer Sorrowful, which has Arabic, Middle Eastern melodies, and these very unorthodox but soulful kind of jazz classic rock guitar licks, and more moaning, groaning vocals, and some more spastic kind of electronic sections of sorts. I don't know, it's noisy and patchy, and it doesn't quite sound like horns and strings to me, so I don't know what else it could be. Whatever. It's a bunch of weird shit, but it's anchored by a solid, simplistic foundation of groovy, kind of gristly bass and drum stuff. Right as the track feels like it's about to get too weird and too big and too wild for its own good, Mama Leek wisely pull back and lay into some more emotional and simplistic kind of keyboard stuff. It feels elegant, it's pretty, it's nice. And that transitions into kind of like a noise rock, jazzy drawl of sorts with aching vocals and a lot of quiet, contemplative sections and moments. Then there's Hatful of Rain, which sandwiches a legitimate outburst of like noisy, misanthropic, blackened sludge in between these more intimate, stripped down, but still very cosmic and spacious kind of experimental jazz sprawls. Love the combination of woodwinds and these kind of like gothic crooning vocals early on in the cut. I love how when it does go into these heavier, more extreme sections, it is such a wicked curveball. I will say though, I think my favorite cut on the record might be Hidden Exit on a Greyhound though, because even though it doesn't introduce anything that we haven't kind of already talked about, it does have these very spacious contemplative sections and moaning, aching vocals. It's simultaneous to that still feels really important and really different. It has a more emotional kind of feel and tone to it. It has a more cathartic kind of finish to it. Great use of bells and voiceovers and samples on this thing, plus these kind of more country westernist tones again, that kind of does make it feel like you're on a fucking Greyhound bus, maybe traveling through the desert somewhere, you know? You're contemplating, you're staring out the window as the sun rises or as it sets, or maybe it's raining, I don't know. It does kind of put this really strong image in your head though. The fact that an album so chaotic and weird can end on this kind of like mournful, beautiful, morose kind of note too, I think is really cool. Although a solid runner-up might be Black Pudding served at the Horn of the Altar. I just really enjoy how this track can have these morning aching vocals on top of, for the most part, one of the more straightforward kind of jazz cuts on the record. Like, it almost kind of feels like something I would hear in like a dark underground jazz bar here in the city. I will say I do think this album is a little bit fatty in some points here and there. Legion of Bottom Deck Dealers, for instance, is like just slightly over 10 minutes long when it probably could have made do with being like seven or eight. But overall, I, I wouldn't say that I have any major complaints. I was thoroughly invested in this album. I really enjoyed it. I think it has a really unique sound and feel and atmosphere. I like that it does have this more abstract, gritty, dark, fucked up kind of take on like jazz metal, that it doesn't feel as big or as cosmic or as grand as, you know, again, Opeth, Cynic, Atheist, Imperial Triumphant, so on and so forth. I'm honestly feeling a very enthusiastic 4 to 5 on this, leaning towards a 4.5 out of 5. It really is a really great record with a lot of really strong moments. I've listened to this album quite a bit over the course of the past week, and I've, I've made notes and I've dissected it as much as I can, so I feel pretty comfortable with this score at the moment, but I do feel like as time goes on and as I continue to return to this record, it will kind of like get better and better and better for me because there are so many different sounds, there are so many different layers. It's definitely not going to be for everyone. I can already picture a few comments being left here and there from people whining about how it's not true metal or whatever the fuck. I don't really give a shit. I enjoyed the record. I got a lot out of it. I think it's one of the most interesting and unique examples of jazz metal fusion stuff in a while. One of the weirdest albums of the year. Strong 4 to 5, leaning towards a 4.5 out of 5. It might eventually become a 4.5 out of 5. Holy shit. It's weird. Check it out. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I am not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown. He fucking immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.